Well, let's uh, take a look at how this grid lines up. And you are going to see some uh, names that hopefully are very familiar from the world of motorsport. Roman Dumas, Gordon Shedden and Frank Stippler uh, were due to be on the front row together. But sadly, Gordon Shedden isn't up there. They had problems. Andrew Jordan and Craig Breen in the two Ford Lotus Cortinas on the second round. Jimmy Johnson, seven times NASCAR champion. He's sixth on the grid. Esteban Gutierrez still with close connections in Formula One. Steve Soper, uh, one of the most fantastic touring car racers over the years, getting on a bit, but still fast. Nick Nicholas Manassian and Anthony Reid complete the top 10 in an Alpha and another Ford Cortina. Alex Brundle in one of the minis. He's with the fastest mini in qualifying ahead of Brendan Hartley. First time uh, he's having fun in that. Andre Lotterer, then David Brabham in a Jaguar Mark II. Darren Turner's always rapid. He's in the BMW. Neil Yarny, Marcel Fassler, Max Chilton, winner at the Festival of Speed earlier this year, setting a new record. Karun Chandok, our man, he's down in 19th with Matt Neal, touring car champion right alongside. Further down the grid, Andy Pre. Tom Blomfist, Jean-Eric Verne in another of the minis, Stoffel van Dorn doing his first Goodwood revival in a Ford Lotus Cortina and Emanuele Pirro another man with so much success at Le Mans and then on the next row, Rowan Atkinson he had a podium here earlier this year, Ronaldo Capello, Tom Christensen, nine-time winner of Le Mans, they had a mechanical problem, watch Tom in this race, he might be coming through Tony Jardine had an accident uh, towards the end of practice yesterday, Richard Atwood uh, is down at the back there in 30th place, so so much to, to try and keep an eye on here to watch. Um, I am going to keep an eye on Tom Christensen particularly because I spoke to him earlier. He, he feels that the car is actually pretty good, but they just had a mechanical issue. He only did two laps. That's the one thing to look for is, is cars out of place as it is at the moment. You're right. TJ, Tony Jardine, he tried to rearrange the chicane at some point yesterday as well. So his time is uh, not competitive. But who will it be that comes through? Which will be the car that... Uh, lasts the longest in this 25 minute sprint race this really is an all or nothing type of race and i feel <laughs> that we're going to get all or nothing in these 25 minutes i think the big american cars are going to take some beating uh, certainly they're fast and yesterday in practice it looked like they got the kind of longevity and tire degradation as well that you would want it looks like they're going to go the distance without uh, running out of grip it is lovely to see those big american cars up against these rather neat little european cars of the time the alpha the sprints the little minis as well minis uh, won championships of the british saloon car uh, title back in 1961 with john whitmore and 1962 with john love and yet, as I mentioned, the big Ford Galaxy was also a star car. And for Graham Hill, who we are celebrating this weekend as the 60th anniversary of his first world championship title in Formula One in 1962. Actually, Graham Hill drove one of those big Ford Galaxies. He drove it at Alton Park in the Gold Cup in 1963. So like that car you're looking at on the left-hand side of your screen, Graham Hill raced one of those. He did get beaten that day by Dan Gurney in another one of these cars. So they really were very rapid at the time with this 7-litre engine. And they drive so flat on the circuit. They look fairly well sorted. You would think it might be a little lumbering and have a whole load of roll to it, but it doesn't at all. Rowan Atkinson, you mentioned earlier on in the members meeting, he podium in the members meeting. I think that was in a Mark II Jaguar as well. He can drive. Let's see what he can do from the back end. Yes, uh, it must be pretty uh, fascinating for him, though. A bit daunting in many ways with all these other drivers who are playing their part in this race. So number one, two, four, that's Richard Atwood. That's the last car to line up. Beautiful Jaguar Mark II that is just about to line up into position. And we can just see Rowan Atkinson in the blue, uh, the big blue car moving over to the right there uh, towards the back of the grid. So we'll see how he gets on as well. There's so much to focus on, but we're really going to be uh, passing our attention onto the front as much as possible because we are hoping for a big battle up front. Green flag from the back then. All eyes down on the flag, man. The St. Mary's Trophy at the Goodwood Revival is underway. Oh, jump start. No, I hope not. Very slow from the big American. The 92 car is going to find himself in trouble down the Madrid because a couple of agile European and American cars side by side. Andy Jordan trying to go around the outside and the Ford Lotus Cortina, but it's Frank Stippler who has the lead in the Alfa Romeo and into second place from Roman Dumas gets the big Galaxy back into second place. And look now look at the straight line speed. He's back in front. Got to do that in the early laps. So Alpha looked very nimble yesterday in practice and it's proving
proving to be so today in the main race, of course. This sprint race is going to be difficult to see who is going to catch the 92 car now that he's hit the front. Biggest hope they had was uh, hold him up through the early laps. Not a chance. Behind, you've got the battle between the two Lotus Cortinas of Andrew Jordan and the rally driver Craig Breen, who's getting into historic racing, really, for the first time here. So the two Ford Lotus Cortinas, there they are, um, and they know each other because uh, Andrew Jordan's uh, team has set that car up and running it for him, but they've got a battle on their hands, and all of them are trying to come down the back long straight as fast as possible, and the Alfa Romeo is maybe missing out to the two Ford Lotus Cortinas as they manage to zap past the Alpha, but the Alpha's quick through the corner, so I don't know whether they're going to be able to hold on. Andrew Jordan having to defend. Good and camera. Got good corner. Now you get a real idea of what's what as far as sideways action's concerned, and the big American has managed to get down to the chicane first, and these guys have sorted themselves out slightly better than I thought they might do by the time we got to the chicane. There is Jimmy Johnson in another of the big Ford Galaxy. So Jimmy uh, is running in sixth place at the moment. Uh, sorry, no, yes, it is um, fifth place now for him. Here's the red with the white stripe. That is Jimmy Johnson, seven-time NASCAR champion. It's if amazing not, having him here. If you're not here, you couldn't possibly have just felt the way that the ground shook as these oh, guys went by. Oh, a little bit he's surprising. a rally driver, but he shouldn't be taken to the grass right now. He's lucky that he's dried out from this morning. It was cold and it was frosty this morning and the grass now has some grip, clearly, as the 68 just found out. Frank Stippler flashing the lights on the Alpha. He was trying to get back past Andrew Jordan. I think he's optimistic, don't you? Oh, one wheel off the ground for the Alpha. Absolutely sideways on. Trying to intimidate the 77 car of Jordan if he can with putting his lights on. Never works for me on the motorway. <laughs> so Andrew Jordan, can he hold on in second place at the moment? Can he close up that gap at all to the big Ford Galaxy? One and a half seconds. The gap was when they went over the line last time. But as we go down the straights, every time we go down the straights, the Ford Galaxy. You hear the lovely rumble of that V8 engine and it just pulls away from the European style cars that we're watching behind the Ford Lotus Cortina and the Alfa Romeo which is having a go. Yeah, the Alfa Romeo looks so good through practice yesterday. I was impressed with the, the way that it managed to keep its wheels in line and just power its way through the corners whereas the Cortina's just a little bit livelier at the rear end if you like, a little bit more oversteer from the Cortina's but at the moment it's Jordan in second place in the 77 car, Green in the 68 car in third place, then Stippler, 33, is in fourth place. Johnson <laughs> powering away again, sliding around his first time here, and it's a big ask, isn't it? A race like this in a big car like that on a track you've never come across before. So there are battles going on throughout the field, but up front, it's a good lead for Roman Duma. Still got his race for second. And I have to say, going through that first match with corner, the Alpha looks to have a little bit more pace. And again, that's where he gets really close to the back of Andrew Jordan. But now, as they pick up a bit more speed, it's flat out through there. Look at the sliding. He's having a look up the inside now. And that could be opportunity, but Andrew takes the line into the first part of St. Mary's and stays in second. This is quality racing between these two at the moment, to be that close and that confident in the man around you, of course. But again, the Cortina just a little loose at the in, at the rear end compared with the Alpha. The Alpha looks the better car, but I think the Cortina has just about got the power and performance to stay in front at the moment. It's going to take something audacious from the car that we see in second place on screen at the moment. So through has gone Dumas already, and he's got a fair old lead. Unless he's got a mechanical coming his way or some other unfortunate incident, he looks like he's away with this one at the minute. But the battle for second place is three-way, possibly four-way if Johnson manages to get up there with the big American as well. Oh, locked up. Andrew just locked up a little bit, but he's kept it online, and he's still being kept the pressure on right behind him by Frank Stippler in the Alfa Romeo Julia Sprint, uh, a car that back in the mid-1960s was the European Touring Car Champion winning machine. These types of car, we've got a few of them uh, in this race, but this one is the most rapid at the moment, and uh, let's this see. This is what it's all about, though, Ben, isn't it? It's pressure. You've got to keep a Applying the pressure at the moment. Stippler is applying the pressure to Jordan. Will he crack? Will he make that mistake that Stippler's looking for? This is where he was really quick last time. I think he's got it done this time. He's going to be down the inside, I think, in this particular time. Has he got it there? Yes, he has got it there. Brilliant, brilliant drive. Stippler got the exit out through Madrick and all the way down there perfectly well and has managed to slip in front. Now then, has he got the pace to stay in that second place? We'll find out. Andrew Jordan hopping over the curb. You see how the back end of the Cortina really waves and wobbles. It's not an easy car at this sort of pace to keep it going in a straight line. The Alpha looks a little more stable into the corners than the 
Ford Lotus Cortina, but that was dramatic. And let's just take another look at how he pulled off the move. Yeah, it was just great. He got great drive, kept his foot in it, and just made himself alongside. And once you're door to door, that's good enough, isn't it? And straight the way through there, that was a much cleaner move than I thought he was going to be able to achieve, I've got to say. So the battle for second place is still on. You still got the Alfa Romeo versus the two Lotus Cortinas. Frank Stipler up ahead of Andrew Jordan. And then Craig Breen immediately behind them. We've got a little bit of a gap back to Jimmy Johnson, the NASCAR champion in his Ford Galaxy. Steve Soper is currently running in sixth position. There's a lovely shot as they come through the chicane, keeping it tidy again. Craig getting a little bit close to the grass, but that is his thing. We will have to see how that's going. Um, and we've got minis racing in this race as well. And Karun Chandok is on board one of those minis, and he's in a battle with another mini driver, which is fun. Uh, right ahead of him at the moment, we've got uh, the number 19 car, or it was the Stoffel van Dorn car that was uh, ahead. It's not now, because Stoffel van Dorn is in a Cortina. Uh, so Karun uh, is behind Blomqvist now. Right, yes, OK, so he's behind Tom Blomqvist. There is Karun in the number seven car, and he is behind Tom Blomqvist. Let's have a look at what it is to drive the Mini. He's looking reasonably relaxed. <laughs> it belies his mental state, I'm sure, because really it's been hectic everywhere out on this racetrack at every place on this <laughs> racetrack. He needs more power. Frustration, really. though. He, he feels, yeah, maybe it is a bit slow in a straight line or something going on. Look at the balance. Look at how you have to work the steering. This is through St Mary's. I like the way the steering column is actually rattling around in the dashboard. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be like that. I'm sure it must be. So Karun Chandok then working very, very hard indeed here on board. You can see that his arms are yawing from side to side to try and keep that Mini on uh, on track. But up the front, Dumas has a 4.4 second lead now over Stifler, who has a half a second lead over Jordan. So Stifler is now, this is your race leader, Roman Dumas, and it absolutely shakes our commentary position as he thunders by. I can tell you there's also another battle of the minis going on between Alex Brundle and Andre Lotterer for uh, 11th place. They are very close, so we do have two minis racing really hard here. And this is uh, for 11th position, uh, if that's the two. Yes, it is. Uh, so Alex Brundle and Andre Lotterer having this tremendous... And Lotterer's just on this lap, got in front. So that is Andre Lotterer in the pale blue mini. And then behind him now is Alex Brundle in the mini that he sharing with Bill Solis this weekend, that's Bill's car, and Alex had been in front, but now he's got to find a bit more pace again to get try and get back ahead of Andre Lotterer. Well, you've got to say, Ben, that maybe getting into these cars, having practice in other cars today, this is his first go back in the Mini, the configuration, the change, where you've got to make your mind up, where you're going to be and what you're going to do, he's going to be a little different. He's got that sorted out perfectly. Down the inside. How he to find that amount of pace. No, that was impressive, wasn't it? Was it was indeed. Got past Andre Lotterer. And they're being uh, attacked by David Brabham behind in the Mark II Jaguar. So you've got, again, you know, whatever driver we mention, they're all pretty much star drivers in this race. Well, they are all star drivers. They won't be in it otherwise. And it's impressive to see Alex Brundle, Andre Lotterer, and not far behind David Brabham in a very different kind of car, the Jaguar Mark II. That when British Saloon Car Championship was the battle in the 1960s, oh, often these cars will be fighting. Go. Here comes Lotterer. It's going to be side by side as Lotterer. We've seen him out earlier on today practicing, and uh, he's looked pretty hectic in what was it? I think he was running Cobra, wasn't he, in the, uh, earlier on? And he looked absolutely outstanding in that. So through has gone the eight again. So uh, Lotter, Lotterer in front of Brundle. Brundle's going to have to work hard again as we come through the chicane onto the front straight. Dumas has gone through with a 4.2 second lead over Stipler now, who has a nearly one second lead over the third place man, Jordan. Then it's Breen another 0.9 back in fourth place. Johnson is still fifth. So this is the overtake that Andre Lotterer made on Alex Brundle. Good got, move. Yeah, he got down the inside and Brundle just had to, to, to give him the space, basically. And that was a great move by Andre Lotterer. He is such an experienced racer. He's been racing Formula E and he's actually got a new deal for a Formula E uh, full season next year as well. Oh, look at this. Brundle again working his way up to the inside. He's going to look again at that same place. Yep. Is he going to be able to get unrim? Yes, he is going to be able to get unrim. Will he be able to stay there? I doubt it. But where do you want to be in front? You want to be in front across the line. Oh, oh dear, oh, well, you don't want to be doing that, that's for sure. Pushing the 127. Marcel Fassler, that is. Marcel Fassler and another of the Alphas. Uh, so we've still got the Alpha up to in second place at the moment, but Marcel trying to push his car out of the way. He's doing a sensible thing, trying to get it off track 
so that it doesn't uh, hold everybody up. We've still got 14 and a half minutes to go in this race as we are watching the battle between the two top minis. Alex Brundle versus Andre Lotterer behind them. Um, we've got David Brabham. Stoffel van Dorn is not far behind them as well. Uh, we can't quite see him in the picture. He's in uh, a Ford Lotus Cortina. But Alex Brundle this time is not passed by Lotterer in the same position. He's looking for a different uh, ploy, perhaps. He's shown his hand too many times already. 1 minute 30.195, fastest lap so far. Uh, we're looking at the minis through the chicane. I just love that shot. It gives you a real impression of what everybody's doing out on track. The overhead is a great shot to give you a context of what's going on on track. Down towards the challenging Magic. Virtually flat out in a car like this, but it is drifting all the way through. You can see the work going on on the steering, how it drifts out to the edge, comes back in a little bit, back out to the grass on the outside. No change there. Has he got the run? We've seen this is a good place to get the run, and he has. This is where Alex was passing him. Now, Andre Lotterer trying to get back past Alex Brundle. But it's got to be flat through Ford. Fordham hasn't it so I would imagine slipstream comes into it a little bit with these minis just through there because they are absolutely on the floor as far as the throttle is concerned there's a Jaguar having a little sniff here at the moment as well this uh, I think we have the Mark II uh, uh, yeah. getting involved in this any minute and that's going to be a bun fight yeah David Bradford's loving this he's uh, thinking come on come on I can get into this as well it's just not quite working for him yet as Andre Lotterer and Alex Brundle fight for their positions Alex son of Martin Brundle uh, himself uh, 2016 uh, ELMS champion in the LMP3 category. There is our race leader, though. Roman Duma now has a four-second advantage, and he's doing consistent lap times. He's, he doesn't seem to be losing any pace. There's your second-place car. 3.8 now. He's brought it down, Stipler. So across the line last time, he went from four just over to 3.8. He's taking more than two-tenths of a second out of your race leader. This is the part of the race that I question many times with you, whether we would get any tyre degradation on the big, fast Galaxy whether it was going to cost him later in the race. Now we're going to see if Stipler has got a car that managed to get to, towards him. We'll see if uh, Stipler's got that kind of pace. So the top three are a bit spaced out, but it's not spaced out. And Stoffel van Dorn in the background, I think, was just getting past uh, Brabham. Uh, so you've got the two minis racing hard here, and then you've got the Jaguar and the Cortina. Yeah, the Cortina has got past. So Stoffel van Dorn, and here comes Andre Lotterer. Huh. Andre Lotterer on Alex Brundle. He's got that run again. This is their favourite overtaking spot. Has he done it? Oh, oh, Alex is trying to stay with him, going right around the outside. Can they stay together side by side into St Mary's? Yeah. Alex has still got it, and he takes the curve. Perfect. Absolute quality. Two minis in unison. Brilliant racing from two great drivers. Now the Cortina's coming to play. The Jaguar seems to have run out of momentum. Brabham just going back a little bit after the Cortina made the pass. The 66 car then of Van Dorn is coming good in those classic colours. If there's a, a, a Cortina of that era, it needs to be in those colours. Well, I was talking about Formula E and Stoffel van Dorn, the champion this year in Formula E. And look how he's now catching. Oh, here we a go. very different kind of car. It's not electric, but he's got the pace to get past the both the minis. It's electrifying. It might not be electric, but he's made the move on both of them. And uh, I don't see how they're going to come back at it, because I think that Lotus Cortina is obviously quicker in a straight line. Minis might try to outmanoeuvre it, but I think uh, Stoffel van Dorn is just finding his pace now, finding his feet. Yeah, I think you're right. He's he's learning the track still uh, as he's getting used to being here around the circuit. He's done Festival of Speed on a different uh, layer where we go up towards Goodwood House. But here at the track itself, he's now really beginning to enjoy this Lotus Cortina and he has got himself up a position. He's now in 11th place. He'll be chasing after Anthony Reid, actually, who's the next Anthony car. Anthony Reid, I think. OK, and the two minis are still fighting. I think this mini battle is going to go pretty much all the way to the flag, isn't it? <laughs> And maybe the Jaguar will get into it and Brabham might catch them towards the end of this race. We'll wait and see. Still over 10 minutes to go. What a great bit of racing we're getting here. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Alex Brundle and Andre Lotterer are putting on the best show of all, I think, at this stage, because there's just nothing between them. And actually, through that section, they've caught Stoffel van Dorn again. That is the agility of a mini, isn't it? They were superb cars when they were built, and they're still superb cars now. I know. But I think the Cortina, the Lotus Cortina, should be able to, once it gets through Levant and comes back onto the back straight, it will ease away again. It's whether they're close enough to try and get to uh, them at the chicane, of course. This is Karun Chandok back on board with him as well.
Yeah, and he's got his own little battle going on as well. So is he going to be oh, able to... He's doing plenty of hand-waving, and now I know what he's waving <laughs> at. <laughs> side by side. With another mini. Yeah. With another mini wipe race. So what does that mean, do you think? You know? So I'm on the inside, and watch out, because we're into the braking area, and I'm going to shove you wide. There we go. Oh, no! Oh, oh, he goes off to the left, and the other car just about survives. Unbelievable. Wow, that was all a little bit marginal, Hart wasn't Hartley, it? Hartley, got Brendan Hartley, Hartley yeah. completely crossed up then. Brendan Hartley in the, the Kiwi, who's uh, having a great fun weekend, but that nearly went horribly wrong for them, both of them. And... Um, so I think they've just about managed to, to get through. You're looking at 63, there is Tom Blomfist. Here we go. Oh, that was as sideways as Karun could have got. Was it Karun that was properly sideways? Actually, it was Blomfist, I think. What was it? Let's have a look. Who got sideways, yes. Um, <laughs> so it was Tom Blomfist who really got completely out of shape he there. He gathered that up so well. Karun is... The natural tendency is to get out of the throttle when you're in a big panic station like that, but if you do that in a front-wheel drive car, it goes right the way around on you. What an amazing picture of drivers. Karun is in number seven, of course. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, he's managed to stay out of it. Ah, now then. What, lucky number seven, you mean? Yeah, it's the uh, Barry Sheen number, of course. We've got the Barry Sheen Memorial Trophy here as well during the course of the Goodwood, we Goodwood weekend. And we've got just over eight minutes to go in this St Mary's Trophy. Racing of early 1960s saloon cars with some of the most professional drivers of the current era on board. Many of these. Let me tell you, with that little bit of a hold up through the chicane there, that back marker has brought it down to 2.3 seconds between Dumas and Stippler now. This man is chasing hard. Second place man, you can see the big galaxy that's gone through your shot. Now we come to the second place man, the 33 car here, the little Alpha, is chasing that big American. Will he be able to get. It's the one thing when you're in a big fat car, you're going to have a real problem trying to get through somewhere like this chicane here if you've got traffic it's interesting actually because up to now Dumas has set the fastest lap of the race at a 1 minute 30.1 but Stippler on that lap did a 1 minute 30.2 so the alpha the little he's silver closing, alpha is closing him down yeah. I'm sure tires are going to come to play I didn't think they might in this uh, short 25 minute uh, sprint race but it looks like that might be an issue unless there's something else that I don't know about but look at Stippler right out to the white line and the other side of it back into the sunshine from the cloudier side of the track Maybe that's making a difference. The fact we've got a little bit of cloud now cooling the track down a little bit. We shall wait and see. I think Jean-Eric Verne, uh, he's still out there. We've just seen a car come into the pit, so we have seen a couple of cars drop out of this race, sadly. But we've still got this battle up front, which is great fun to watch. And that was another... Um, it's a good lap going on for... Let's see. Stippler. Let's We're see. Coming, coming to the line now. So there yeah. it is. Look at this. Stippler again, nimble through the chicane. He won't be as fast in a straight line, of course. Passing that big American is going to be harder than anything. Roman Dumas is really going to be the widest uh, galaxy you ever did see. He gained four tenths there, Keith, so not, not a huge amount, but he, he, he's yeah. got it down to just under two seconds. Four tenths on a what? Two and a half mile track, 2.4 mile track. Oh. I said that was pretty good, so oh. Stippler, <laughs> he's determined. That was amazing, just kicking up the dust uh, on the grass. That, I hope he didn't have to lift off the throttle, because if he did, this won't be his best lap. Meanwhile, we've got this other Tina Wars and Mini Wars. Yeah, this other great fight that's going on. And uh, let's go back to Alex Brundle and Andre Lotterer. The two of them are still racing hard. Uh, Anthony Reid um, in the number 70 Cortina. He has now been passed by Stoffel van Dorn. So Anthony Reid is the one sort of checking his mirrors because those minis are bearing down on him. Anthony, such a crucial part of this Goodwood event, has been a part of the Goodwood revival for many, many years. And here comes Andre Lotterer again. Oh, so close. He's almost part of it. It's almost a double-decker mini. Alex Brundle in the number 80 car, up against the number 8 car. He's going to come out from under that slipstream any minute now and try to cut to the inside. Will there be room for that at all? This, is, this must be nerve-wracking for Bill Sonis, the owner of the number 80 car. They have only got this car rebuilt just in time for this event this Look weekend. Look at the pace on the Cortina he had there. The Minis didn't even have to back out of it, and he's managed to pull alongside the Cortina. That's it, Reed, yeah. They haven't quite got him there, but Anthony Reed is definitely about to be passed, isn't he? Yeah. Lotterer going yeah. to the inside. He took his opportunity, didn't he? I think he got out of the throttle because of the Cortina, and Lotterer was up the inside. Oh. And the number eight of Lotterer making that move at the moment. It's still Dumas leads from Stippler, Jordan, Breen, Gutierrez, Soper, Minassian in seventh place, Yani in eighth place, ninth in Van Dorn, and Reed is in tenth place. And we're seeing what trouble he's having holding on to it. And it's almost side by side, but no, Andre Lotterer and Alex Brunnell do follow each other. New fastest lap, by the way, by the race leader. Yeah, so significant. That Ford Galaxy is not losing pace. It's just set a new fastest lap, but a 129. 
think that's just answered my question. <laughs> yeah, is it going to run out of tyres now? But not. this is a chance for Andre Lotra to make a bit of a break on Brundle because he, he gets past that Lotus Cortina. It's here though, isn't it? Madgwick, he's managed to do it, managed to get through. And this could be tricky for Alex Brundle because he's got to get through as quickly as possible. Otherwise, he's losing valuable space to the other mini that he's been fighting with lap after lap after lap. Alex will be desperate to get past that Ford Lotus Cortina of Anthony Reid as rapidly as possible. It's going to be about uh, Cortina placement, isn't it? Where he places that car to cut off Reid's uh, advantage in some of the corners. There's the fastest car of the race being chased by the second place man. That doesn't look like 2.2 seconds to me. No. I think Stippler's closed him down. Maybe there's been a mistake for your race leader Dumas because he is right on top of him now. Yeah, look how close he is. Look at this. Is there a problem for the big American galaxy? Perhaps there is. Let's have a listen. Well, he didn't dive into the pit, so that's good news. And he's got acceleration down the straight. But you're right, that gap has closed to 0.6 of a second on that lap. Yeah, he took a second and a half out of him all in that lap. Uh, it must have been a mistake that we didn't quite see. Or the traffic. traffic. Well, he'd only get the old traffic. I don't remember seeing any around him, but certainly there's no way that you would have taken that out of Demar. Traffic, we are told. So our spotters tell us that traffic was the uh, Rowan Atkinson. It was that um, he was tripping over 129.8. He did the lap before, so that sort of indicates that he's got pace. And then all of a sudden, we find Stippler all over him, the race leader. And it's Stippler all over the curbs as well on the inside. <laughs> I'm loving watching Frank Stippler. Uh, I have to say, his style of driving, Look his how close he is to him again. His determination is is fantastic to watch. I mean, they're all uh, brilliant drivers. He's going to make a pass on him. If they, I don't know why. Dumar is, seems to be inconsistent on this last couple Look of laps. Yes, yeah. There we go then, Stippler. Oh, there's the grass from the side. side. He can't quite make it, and the Galaxy uses its power oh, to get away. I think he ran out of traction. There was no way that he was going to get a full throttle there, was he? It would have been spinning like mad, possibly on a rev limiter, because taken to that much grass, it wasn't going to give him the grip he needed. So Dumar has been let off the hook a little bit there by the over-ambitious Stippler. <laughs> got to say what a fantastic effort look at this once again so Frank Stippler tucks it into the inside Dumas runs it a little wider you do run wide there anyway and he knows All four wheels <laughs> yeah he knows that the car's going to come back that is the standard line so he knew he had to cut onto the grass it has actually cost him a bit the gap's got up now from 0.6 to 1.6 seconds with just two minutes to go cost him a second and that could have been a race winning uh, mistake I was going to say so a shame, a shame there for Frank Stickler. Rowan Atkinson, we're told, is off. Um, he's on the grass at the moment, so uh, he's rejoined, but he's having all sorts of fun at the back. Yeah, well, we've got all sorts of entertainment going on, haven't we? But I tell you what, Andre L uh, Lotterer in the mini that we were watching battling with Alex Brundle definitely managed to just gain a little bit of an advantage after they managed to get past the Lotus Cortina. So that is going to be helping them a little bit. And uh, Max Chilton's down there with them with the Lotus Cortina as well. Can well, Stipler do anything here? We're going to get a lap and this one done, I think, because the flag will be out. They're doing 129, 130s consistently. 129 is the fastest lap done by Dumas a couple of laps ago. Everybody in Goodwood is at the fence watching this. Everybody around here Hope you're having a great time at the Goodwood Revival. Yeah, what a wonderful view it is. And although these two race leaders have opened up a bit more of a gap than we have seen at certain times, what a variety of cars. We've got three different, completely different cars. They are from the same early 1960s period in motor racing, but the big Ford Galaxy with lots of horsepower, the nimble, sweet little Alfa Romeo, the 1600cc engine, and then the Ford Lotus Cortina running in third. Andrew Dorton is still in third place at the moment, ahead of Craig Breen. Uh, Craig, the rally driver, doing a fantastic job. He's still in fourth place. Esteban Gutierrez is now in fifth place in another of the Alfa Romeos, which seem to work very well here at Goodwood, I have to say. Steve Soper is in sixth place, then Nicholas Manassian is in seventh, Iliani in eighth, Stoffel van Dorn, who's moved up through the grid pretty well, actually, I have to say. I think he's got more and more used to the car. He started 24th. I think they may have had a problem in practice yesterday, but Stoffel has been one of the biggest gainers of this race. He's gone from 24th to ninth, and Anthony Reid 
is currently holding that top 10, 10 position. I love what happened, though, because Reed had dropped back behind Lotter and Brundle. It but might not be over yet. May I just no. interrupt you slightly? The last lap, the chequered flag is out now. It's just come to the end of our 25 minutes, and that Alpha is not done yet. Could he pinch this sneaky race down at the chicane? I wouldn't put it past him, but I don't... With that big, long run, there's a back marker coming into view now. I wonder if Jumar is going to be unlucky here and whether Stippler is going to have the luck. Let's wait and see. Blue flags are being waved frantically. This is going to slow Dumas down, but I don't think it's going to be enough. No, he's going to power underneath oh. it. Oh, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. Yes, he gets it done. He should be safe now, but look at Frank Stippler. Oh, Stippler's right there on top of him. I figured he might have a bit of a go. Out will come the chequered flag now, and it is going to be Roman Dumas. Across the line he goes, Roman Duma wins the St Mary's Trophy by a fraction of a second in the end over Frank Stippler in second place. Andrew Jordan's going to come through in third and we have seen three different cars driven at such style here to take the top three places around the track. The Ford Galaxy the winner, the Alfa Romeo in second place, and the Ford Lotus Cortina in third. But it's Roman Dumas who is the star. So look at the battle of the minis, and it's still on, but I think Andre Lotterer is going to be able to fend off Alex Brundle to the line. Here they come, they are chasing after Anthony Reid. I don't quite know what happened, there must have been something that went on with Anthony getting back in front. But Anthony Reid comes over the line in 11th place, Lotterer wins the mini battle. And we're on board with Karun Chandok, and he is going to cross the line, I think in 17th place, as yes. Brendan Hartley just up ahead of him, Karun down there. But what a lovely opportunity to have some fun in the mini. And uh, But well done to Andre Lotra who won the mini war. But this was the man of the day. Looked like he might have got bulked from the line. He just didn't get it launched off the line very well, but it didn't take him very long, did it, to power the galaxy past and uh, he was on a different planet in comparison to most others when it came to the power that's for sure so the 92 car Roman Dumas and we can see this the back marker just homing in as we get to Woodcook corner here and he was in two minds there whether he's going to be able to make that move and all the time Frank Stippler kept it flat all the way through there and look at this in the braking area he very very nearly really if that back marker just held Dumas up a little bit more there would have been a pass on and a shock at the end yeah, the momentum, because the Galaxy, when it loses momentum like it did behind that other car, uh, it's a big, heavy car, so you lose that momentum. He didn't have, then, the speed through the chicane that he would normally have, uh, whereas the Alpha was absolutely maximum momentum. So, But then, under acceleration, the Ford did it. And that other car that we mentioned and sort of dismissed fairly well was Dindo but Capello, so it was no slouch no. in the other car. No, absolutely. No, and, and he did keep out of the way. Fair play to him. He, he just. Was, yeah, just. It was quite close but he did keep out of the way look at the wonderful reaction from fans here at Goodwin and it's so lovely to see you all enjoying the, the, the show that we've just enjoyed so much this is such a part of the revival taking saloon cars from the early 1960s and seeing such different machinery driven by superstars we will see this again tomorrow but the cars will be driven by different drivers and actually although Roman Dumas has won this race the actual St Mary's trophy will be an aggregate win for both today's race and tomorrow's race so you can't say that Roma has won the trophy he hasn't it all depend on how it goes when they share back to the owners and entrance of the cars that puts so much pressure on the second driver on the co-driver Stippler did all he could to close that gap down to an acceptable level for his co-driver tomorrow so it's really going to be down to who drives the best out of the should we say the amateur drivers for want of a better phrase it's going to be a very this is not done and dusted by any means no but what a he still deserves the uh, applause that he's getting all around the circuit for winning this race i mean he has won this race fair and square but it was tight at the end there once again and i i have to say so impressed with what frank stippler did throughout that whole race the start he made he nearly he nearly managed to get in front of the uh, ford into the first corner there's karun i think karun chandox has had a lovely time in the number seven mini and and uh, we will see that car back out again tomorrow.
but in a different pair of hands as they the cars go back to other drivers. It's going to be John Cooper who drives that car in the race tomorrow. Uh, a couple of the BMWs, uh, one of the BMWs anyway, down at the back there. And uh, there's some congratulations uh, going on there. Roman Duma and Frank Stippler having a bit of a chat and a pat on the back after they put on such a great show for us. And uh, Roman Dumas now helmet off and with a big smile on his face. And quite right, too. Well done. Many congratulations to him and to everybody involved in that because we saw a tremendous show. And that's what we all come for here to Goodwood, isn't it? To see an entertaining battle like that. And particularly in the midfield, too. I love watching the, the minis going wheel to wheel, side to side. And we nearly had a big accident, but they all sorted it out and kept it as clean as possible. Yeah, quality driving, even at that close quarters, all the way around the racetrack. And uh, the mini Cortina battles were probably my favourite. Although I've got to say, Romain Dumas looked to like he was under a little bit of pressure. He just caught the back markers occasionally where he didn't want them. Um, when he lost that uh, two and a half second lead, got himself tangled up a little bit. Stipler was uh, looking for an opportunistic move late on by the look of that, and he wasn't shy, was he, coming down into the chicane? In fact, Capello locked up on the way in on the other Alpha on the way in there, and Stipler got under him quite easily. But there was no way, once uh, the big American car had got through the, the chicane, there's no way you're going to outpower it to the line. So good win, but tomorrow it's all to play for. Well, we shall see how it all goes. Um... It is going to be uh, at the end of Sunday's race uh, races that we will see the second part of the St. Mary's Trophy and to see how the aggregate works out. Uh, but for today, Roman Dumas has done the job. The victory by 0.6 of a second in the end over Frank Stippler with Andrew Jordan in third place. And we can hear from the top three, top three now with Ed Foster. Andrew Jordan, I'm going to squeeze in. Sorry, Frank, we'll come to you in a second. Hey, yeah. Andrew... Even as an amateur, I knew you were giving it everything in those first few laps. Yeah, I was. The, the whole way through, really, it was, um, yeah, it was low grip and sliding and pushing on. But it's a good thing with this race because of the aggregate result. You know, it could come down to tenths at the end. So you've got to keep um, pushing on. Obviously, Roman was very quick and, and Frank was very quick in the, in the Alpha. But, uh, yeah, it was good to be, uh, be here and having the, uh, the garland and the cigar. Andrew, well done. Thank you. Right, let's find Frank Stippler, who spent a little bit of time on the grass. Frank, what a fantastic drive. I mean, you needed one more lap. Uh, maybe. Um, the car was pretty strong until the end, and Roma is a fantastic driver. But uh, beside that, it's uh, just so amazing to be here. And um, yeah, in, always in the in-lap, uh, it's close to the tears. I mean, um, it's such a privilege to be invited and uh, yeah, to drive such a car. Maybe the GTA is one of my favorite cars. Um, all over um, I think I drove more or less every car meanwhile but the GTA is just such a pleasure to drive and thanks to Alex as well to preparing it that that well I'm not surprised after that well done thank you very much right let's find first place Roma um, Roma we're just gonna dive in I'm so sorry Roma he kept you honest didn't he yeah, yeah, he, for sure he was there all the way. I mean, at the end, you know, I was very happy to see the checker flag. On my board, they showed me two minutes to go. Luckily, I saw the checker flag at the same time. I can tell you it was, it was very great, but good fun, you know, such a different car. And at the end, with nearly the same speed. And uh, yeah, it's a great show. We'll see tomorrow with my teammate now what will happen. But uh, yeah, nice race, like always, you know, and uh, a lot of tactic. I have to save the car at the start because I was really scared with the brake. And at the end, anyway, I didn't have much brake left. So very interesting, you know, like always. Roma, well done. Thank you very much.